We are happy to welcome Jean-Luc Riotelen from Orsay for, and for two talks. Okay, so there, there is a talk today and, and the and next one uh, in one week from now. Okay, so the, the ta his title is Stable Rationality and, and Quadratic Forms, a survey. So please start. Okay, well, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I am, I'm, I'm sorry to impose uh, two talks, but uh, so when, when I discussed that with the organizers, I told them that I had nothing very new to tell, but I had something, a nice story to tell, but it would need two, uh, two sessions. So that's what we have now, right? In fact, uh, this is a talk which, uh, which, uh, which Stefan Schreier could have given, but when he gave it a talk in the seminar, he decided to look on something very recent rather than his earlier work, which is already too old, namely it's probably two years old, so I'm probably going to describe what he, he could have described better than I. All right, so uh, the topic of the talk is Quadratic Forms and Beyond, exactly like the title of your seminar. So there was a time when Quadratic Forms of Fields were deemed too special a topic. I vividly remember a famous uh, Romanian geometer saying, oh, one more book about Quadratic Forms, that's enough. Okay, in these two talks, I'm going to review how Quadratic Forms and particularly Pfister Forms have been used in an essential way to prove spectacular non-rational results in complex algebra geometry. And this is something you will not see in the mathematical reviews reports, because it seems that the word Pfister form is foreign to the, to the complex algebraic geometry language. So we'll see a meeting today. So the talks are not meant for the specialists, I, I, I repeat. The, uh, so this is the first talk. So let me be very basic to start with. Uh, an integral variety of dimension D over field K is called rational if it's birational to projective space PD. In other words, the function field of the variety is purely transcendental over K. And an integral variety X over field K is called stably rational if when you multiply X by so projective space, you get something partial to projective space. As one knows, this is this doesn't imply that X is rational. Okay, and the, the general zero problem asks whether some varieties which are very close to being rational, for instance, unirational varieties or rationally connected varieties actually are rational or at least stably rational. So for people who have not seen these words, where well, unirational variety, I think everybody knows, it's a variety which is dominated by projective space by under some rational map. And rationally connected variety is a variety which has the property of a complex field that uh, through any two points, you can draw a curve of genus zero. That's one definition. And um, so around 1970, so we're, we're 50 years ago, uh, the, the lurid problem for three dimensional varieties was solved by three different groups of people. Uh, the original Lorett problem. So are unirational varieties rational? So there was a solution by Clements and Griffiths, so coming from Hodge theory by means of intermediate Jacobian. And the method seems today still seems special to dimension three. Uh, there was a paper by Iskowski and Manin where they proved that uh, arbitrary quartic three folds uh, hypersurfaces are, are, are not rational by proving that the, the Cremona group, that, that any partial automorphism actually is an automorphism of, of the hypersurface. The method went back to Noether, Fano, Segre. Uh, it uses linear systems, canonical bundle, current cohomology. This method was developed a lot uh, over the years. Uh, it's called the rigidity method, and it applies to many Fano varieties in any dimension. And then there was something which looked a bit more special namely the artin mumford uh, method. They produced a specific conic bundle of a P2 for which they proved that uh, the conic bundle is not rational by using uh, the following in Barishon invariant. You take integral Betty cohomology of a smooth projective variety and you look at its torsion subgroup. That's a Barishon invariant. And they produced such a conic bundle threefold which was unirational and for which there was non-trivial torsion in this H3XZ. Uh, this can be translated into something about bra group and ital cohomology. Okay, so the previous, the previous string of arguments are, have to do with current cohomology. This one is, has to do with ital cohomology. So it has one advantage over the previous method. 
is that it disproves stable rationality, whereas the, the other methods just disprove rationality. And it's been it's, it's, it's quite powerful to study BG for G finite group. So the quotient of GLN by, by a finite subgroup. Uh, but initially it seemed quite useless when it came to study uh, smooth final hypersurfaces. And then later, uh, some 25 years later, there was a, another method, which I'll talk about it, which was devised by Collar. Right. Now, let me just remind you of a few birational invariants. So if you want to show that something is not rational, you try to find groups which tend to be trivial and rational varieties, and you try to prove they're not rational in the variety you're interested in. So one is, uh, you take uh, you take the sheaf of differentials, and you take um, you take global sections of omega tensor R for R positive. If X is rationally connected, and particularly if X is irrational, then this group is zero. We're in characteristic zero. And uh, over the complex, as I said, there's this other invariant, which is the uh, the torsion in the third beta number. So that's zero if X is stable rational. Uh, another Another rational invariant is the bra group, which is defined as H2 et al of X present in GM. And if X over K is stable rational, then this bra group is reduced to the bra group of the ground field. And that, that group, in, uh, this group, in fact, is a special case of an, um, something more general, which is unrefined cohomology. I, I'll come to that a bit later. So this is, I, I'll define this a bit later. And again, these unrefined cohomology groups have the property that if the variety you can look at is stable rational, then these groups are reduced to what you compute on the ground field. And you can do that with other coefficients like mu n tensor j or q mod z of j. Okay, so the Artin Mumford example, which will be our starting point in, in these talks, um, the, it's, it's, it's got several incarnations. Uh, one is it's it can be looked at a double cover P3, a ramified along a quartic, which has 10 nodes, exactly 10 ordinary singular points. And the other, another interesting uh, uh, incarnation is a conic bundle of, of the plane. Whose, if you have a conic bundle, you have a ramification locus, of course, the, uh, the points where the, the conic, the smooth conic that generates to two lines or worse. And so, um, in the case of, uh, so they, they have a conic bundle. The rational locus is the union of two smooth cubic curves, which are transversal to each other. But these two smooth cubic curves have a property that there exists a smooth conic, which is tri-tangent to each of these cubics. Now, these configurations may look very special, but as we'll see later, uh, finding these very special configurations is key to, um, to getting more and more interesting examples uh, and general examples. Okay, so Artin and Mumford actually computed uh, smooth projective resolution of, of this conic bundle. Conic bundle I is given by something, some singular equations. Huh? So they computed a, a resolution of singularities and they computed the, the, Betty, the, the third Betty group and its torsion and they find it was non-zero, okay? So that's how they proved that the, the variety was not rational nor even stably rational. Uh, a, a remark here is that all conic bundles over P2C and ever of PNC are rationally connected. This is an exercise. It's, it just uses sense uh, same theorem. And it is an open question whether conic bundles over P2C are unirational. In fact, it's an open question whether rationally connected varieties are unirational. It's a big open question. We're not going to handle this in this lecture, nor in the next one. Okay, quite generally, if you take a smooth projective variety over the complex, uh, the, the, the bra group of X is an extension of this group considered by Artin and Mumford by a divisible group, Q mod Z to the power B2 minus rho, where B2 is the second Betin number, a rho is the rank of the narrow server group. And in fact, but in fact, this group, this, this, this group here is zero as soon as H2X is zero. And if you take something rationally connected, for instance, something irrational and characteristic zero, then HIXOX is zero for any I. Okay. So in that case, the, the, the bra group just coincide with the group which is con considered by uh, Artin and Mumford. Okay, now this, uh, this group uh, was used by uh, Saltman and Bokomolov. And they, they actually they addressed the following question. 
how to compute the bar of x for some unknown smooth projective model of a given singular variety of y. So typically, if you're interested in taking a finite group G, embedding it in GLN, look at the quotient GLN mod G, and you would like to know whether this is, this is rational. And you say, well, let's look at the smooth projective model. The problem is that you don't know how to write the smooth projective model. But the point is that and this is what Saltman first noticed and then was developed by Bogomolov in the example I just mentioned. Uh, quite often, um, in many cases, it is possible to compute whether this group, this certified bar group, is non trivial. And sometimes it's even possible to compute this group without actually knowing a smooth projective model. And so, what is the method? The method is to use uh, homomorphism called residues, which are attached to discrete variations on the function field of your variety, the, the variations which are trivial on the ground field K. So uh, there's a theorem is that if you take X over C smooth and projective, you can compute prob of X, that is H2 et al XGM, by taking the prob of the function field and looking at all the residues corresponding to codemission one point on your variety. You look at this map, this, this global map, uh, actually, it lands in the direction, and you look at the kernel. And the kernel is exactly the bar of the smooth projection model. So, in principle, if you know all about the codemission one points and use smooth projection model, you're in business. But there's even better that you can even forget about smooth projection model. You just look at the elements in the bar of, of C of X, which have trivial residue with respect to arbitrary discrete version rings of the, of the function field of X. Okay, so you don't have to write a, a, a model. You say, let's take a random discrete version and let's try to compute the residue of this given element. And in some cases, you're very happy. You manage to prove that your given element has all its residues trivial, even though you have no idea how to, smooth, to produce a smooth projective model. And so there's a third version, which is not so important, which is you could look at uh, uh, all commission one points of all normal models of X. So, so one needs formulas to compute the residues, but these formulas are well known on symbols as of quaternion algebra. So I, I don't reproduce them, reproduce them in, in this lecture, but uh, uh, this, this famous formula where you write minus one to the power of variation of A, variation of B, A to the power of variation of B divided by B to the variation of A, and you, you, you reduce and look at this in K, kappa star module kappa star square, where kappa is the residue field of B. So in some cases, this is enough to produce non-trivial elements in the power of X. So here, here there's a double aspect. You find some element, and then you compute all the residues. If you're, if you're happy, and if, you have, if you're lucky, you find that all the possible residues are zero. But at that point, there's another problem, is that you have your, your element in the bar of the function field, and now you don't know whether it's not zero. So you have to use another tool to decide whether the element you looked at, which has all trivial residues, whether it's not zero. Okay, this was used by this method was used by Saltman and Bogomolov to disprove rationality and give measure of lack of stable rationality for field of invariancy of VG for various finite group G. So they started with a famous paper of Saltman uh, in 1984. Okay, let's look at Artin Mumford and then revisit Artin Mumford without uh, smooth projective models. Um, so uh, Let's recall, if you take a smooth conic over a field F, given by equation X squared minus AY squared minus BT squared equals zero, when the kernel of the map from bar of the ground field to bar of the function field is of order at most two, and it's spanned by the class of the quaternion algebra AB. This result this is written of VIT in 1934. In fact, the image of bar of X in this is, is just the bar group of C, but that's not important for our purposes. Okay, now if you take a conning, but now go back to the situation typical of a C where you have a conic bundle, X goes to S over P to C. And here, when I say conning bundle, I speak in a very loose fashion. That is that we have a morphism. The joint fiber is a conic. I'm not saying at this point, I'm not demanding at this point that the, the vibration is flat or that the total space is smooth. Okay. Okay, so we suppose we have a smooth conic bundle over P2. And the, the, the generic point, uh, over the generic point, you have a conic over the C of S. And this corresponds to the quaternion algebra with non trivial class in bravo X because the, I assume that the vibration has no section, a rational section. In the Altin Manford context, 
what one does, so I'm looking at the Artin Mumford uh, example. This is what we did in the paper with Ungerian. We, we look at the quaternion algebra given by FG1, G2 with functions FG1, G2 in the function field of the P2. And here, G1 and G2 are the affine equations for the smooth, two smooth cubics. Remember, we had these two smooth cubics, which intersect transversally. And there was this, this, this smooth connect, which was tri-tangent to each of them. So I, we take f equals zero, the affine equation of this uh, conic. And then we look at the amount of bar of the function field of x given by the image of fg1. So we look at the quaternion algebra fg1 in c of p2, and we push it into the function field of x. And because, uh, because fg1, g2 is zero when you push it to c of x, this image is the same as the image of fg2. Okay, so we get a class in the bar of c of x. And what one shows is that we show the following facts. Uh, for each i equals one, two, there exists discrete variation of C of P2, where FGI, the quaternion algebra FGI, has a non trivial residue. I just compute. Yeah. And basically, you look at uh, <laughs> the variations corresponding to, to, the, to G1 and G2. And now, this already implies that beta is non zero. In, in fact, why? Because suppose beta that is fg1 c of x was zero, then because the kernel by this result just consists of just two elements, either with a fg1 equals zero at the level of c of p2, or with a fg1 equals fg1 g2 at the level of c of p2, but then fg2 would be zero. But because uh, for both fg1 and fg2 somewhere there's non-trivial residue, neither fg1 nor fg2 are zero. Okay? So we conclude that this class fg1 pushed inside c of x is non-trivial. And then the other thing one shows is that if you take an arbitrary discrete version of C of P2, at least one of FGI has a trivial residue at W. And then you discuss the possible points of P2 on which a variation of C of X would be centered. There, you have to be a bit subtle because if you take, uh, you have C of P2 sitting in C of X, C of P2 is of transcendence degree two, C of X of transcendence degree three, and you look at a trace of the variation on C of P2. This is centered on the point of P2. This could be either a Codemption 1 point of P2, or the generic point, generic point is not important, but it could be a, a point of Codemption 1 in P2, or it could be a close point. And one has to discuss what happens when the center is a close point as well. So I'm not describing this in this, this slide. But in any case, what one finds is that the class FG1 actually is the non trivial class in the unified Brauber of CFX. And then we conclude that X is not stably rational without having had to discuss a specific smooth projective model of X. Okay, that's uh, Artin Mumford uh, revised, re I mean, looked at from a different point. Okay. Now here's a, an exercise, which is not an exercise because not completely trivial. Uh, the challenge is to produce configuration of lines in P. So we, remember, we, we started basically from this configuration of, of two cubics and a conic. We could start with other configurations. Well, you can start with configuration of lines simply in P2 and look at cunning bundles of a P2 whose revision is only constant, is only occurs at, along this set of lines. And then the, the exercise is to produce examples where the total space of the operation has non-zero unified Braga. So in our paper in 89, we give an example with 10 lines. One can show that there is this configuration with six lines. And these are degenerate versions of the two Artin Mumford cubics. And in fact, one cannot do anything with less, strictly less than six lines. And that's a shame because that would be a, would have been very interesting for the problem of rational of cubic three folds. Okay, one advantage of the, 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 the thing we, we did with Ungerian is that this is a rational argument. Okay, we don't need construction of a smooth or a mildly singular models for the total space of the conic bundle. At this point, one should say that for later purposes, uh, one cannot even stay, always stay in this beautiful, purely rational situation. There are some cases where you really have to look at concrete projective models or projective space, in particular for differential arguments that we'll see later. And then one has to look at quadric bundles of Pn, which are given by, in an explicit fashion by a vector bundle of Pn, sometimes uh, direct some split a vector bundle, and some invertible sheaf, and a non-zero element in the symmetric product of uh, S2 of E, global sections. 
and then advancing local to this section. So very precise way of describing a quadratic bundle. So in the simplest case, one consider by degree D2, and when we look at the symmetry square matrix made up of homogeneous polynomials, all of the same degree D. Yeah? And this defines a conic bundle. But other choice of the family DI might, might be more efficient. Okay, now let me uh, go on with what we did uh, with uh, Manuel and uh, and discuss higher unrified cohomology. So this is generalization of a bar group. So suppose you take a um, uh, funny Galois module of a field, I'm checking whether I'm in time. Okay, fine. Over field K. So you have the field K, you have the, the separable closure of K, KS, and then the Galois group. And then you take find a finite group with an action, a discrete action of the, of the Galois group on N. If you take uh, X, a smooth projective variety with fraction field K of X, you can look at the cohomology of the function field of, of K of X with values in M. And again, it's possible to define resume maps attached to each discrete variation ring on K of X, trivial on K. So you have residues from HI of K of X M with values in HI minus one kappa V, where kappa V is residual field at V. With coefficients, then there's a twist. You go from M to M minus one. Uh, this is typically, if you want to know why, if you've never seen this twist, just think of the fact that if you take um, a uh, discrete version ring, k is fraction field, kappa the real field. There's a map from k star mod k star square to z mod two. That is from h1 of k, which coefficient nu two, to h0 of kappa, which coefficient z mod two. So the coefficient of uh, passed from mi two to z mod two. So this is this twist here. Okay, so in the definition of right cohomology, we are purely birational. We look at all the discrete version ring of k of x, which are trivial and k. These are the three maps. And this kernel, by definition, is, is a partial invariant. This is completely obvious because it's defined purely in terms of the function field. In fact, there are stable invariants. That is, they coincide if you take if you replace x by x cross p1k. This is a, a consequence, if you want, of uh, Fadeyev's exact sequence in Galois cohomology. Now, there's a suffixate theory at this point. This is defined in relatively elementary fashion. Well, I mean, except that you have different residues. Uh, uh, there's a suffixate theory called block August theory, which uses uh, Gaston's conjecture for Galois for etal cohomology, which shows that uh, in defining this group, one could look at a smooth projective variety X and restrict attention to the discrete version rings corresponding to conventional endpoint on your smooth projective model. So just the analog what we saw with the bra group. And this theory also shows that these groups are functional contravariant for arbitrary k-morphisms of smooth projective proper varieties. Well, in many cases, one tried to dispense with the block August theory, but well, it's quite convenient to have this at, at one's disposal. Okay, for L prime up to the characteristic, the basic standard coefficient m what one take, which one take are mu ln, the ln root of unity, tensored with itself j times, or the direct limit of the mu ln tensor j for all n, where j is a fixed positive integer. And um, one can look at actually this limit because of Wojewski's theorems is actually the union, not just the direct limit, but the union of these groups with, with finite coefficient. Sorry, sorry. Um, so, uh, so, the, to, 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 so to give examples, if you take H1 and are fine with QL mod ZL, this group classifies L primary cyclic at covers of X. If you take X of a K smooth projective, that, and you take a uh, twist coefficient for one, then what you recover is the bra group. Okay, so definitely this HINR are generalizations of the bra group of varieties. So what we did in, uh, which was original in the paper in 89 is that we used H3NR, so the next unrefined cohomology group to produce analogs of Artin Mumford with H3NR. Okay, and so we produced examples. I mean, the, the challenge at the time was to produce examples 
of such varieties for which the Borg was not enough to detect non-rationality, but this new invariant could detect non-rationality. Okay. And we produce six dimensional unirational varieties, quadric bundles over P3 with generic fiber, a three dimensional quadric for which the artin Manford invariant vanishes, but HRNR shows the variety are not stably rational. And works uh, along these lines was later done in higher, with higher enough cohomology by Pear and by uh, Ashok. So I'll describe the method. Again, I repeat, this is not for specialists. This has been known by many people for a long time. So the tool, the first tool is uh, an analog of Witt's theorem. Remember we use, uh, the, there was Witt's theorem that told you that if you take a conic, a smooth conic, the kernel of Brabov K to Brabov of the function field of the conic is just at most Z mod two spanned by the class of a certain quaternion algebra. So take a field and take elements in F star. Let's look at the smooth quadric defined by the vanishing of diagonal quadratic form, the fist of form of rank two to the n, given by one minus A1, tensor one minus A2, tensor one minus AN. Okay, that's a quadratic form of rank two to the n, well known to people working in quadratic form. So I think everybody in this audience knows about them. And a famous theorem is that if you look at the, the Galois cohomology of F with question Z mod two, and you go to the function field of, the, of this Fister quadric, then the kernel is at most Z mod two. Yeah, uh, East. Yeah, okay, right. This is a bit of German here. Yeah. Uh, it is spanned by the element A1 cap AN, where AI is the class of, of AI in F star mod F star square, which is H1 of S question Z mod two. Okay. That theorem is Witt's theorem for n equals two. For n equals three, this is theorem of Arason, which predates all the work of Merkwef and Suslin, but which is in the spirit of this, uh, these theorems. For n equals four, this is proved by, by Jacob, uh, by Jacob and, and Marcus Rost in 1989. And for NN, this is a theorem of Olof, Vishik, and Wojewski in 2007. And that result, exactly the, this, this theorem of the kernel, also holds if you replace uh, the quadric Q by the Fister neighbor, where you just take one minus A1, tensor one minus AN minus one, and you add just minus AN. And that's because in fact, the function field of this quadric is stable operational equivalent to the function field of the, this, the, the Fister quadric. Okay, this is one tool to generalize uh, our approach to the artin Mumford example. And the second tool, is to produce an analog of this configuration we had in the plane. So remember, we could do configuration with uh, uh, two cubics and a configuration of 18. We did a configuration of 18 plays in P3. And so this was, uh, well, this was not so obvious to find, but we found it. And so what we produce in the end, we produce functions, rational function, fg, h1, h2, as functions of equations of and with residues at version of C3 with good, good properties, the analog what we saw with the residues in the, in the description of the Art and Buffett example. And then we took for X of C, F H1, H2 we had. Is it possible to um, state the requirements for this configuration in purely geometric terms? You mean like, the, uh, well, uh, okay, I'll, I'll answer this question by telling you which configuration of lines we had found in, P, in, in, um, in P2 in the paper with, uh, with Ungerin. Remember, there was this question of tangency, which was important, okay? So in the case of Artin Mumford, you had this, this two cubics and then this conic, which was tri tangent to each, each, each cubic. So in the paper with, with Oenguren, uh, we give an example where the configuration consisted of two lines. And then we first give an example with two lines and then two quartics, which were a tangent to, uh, which were um, tangent to each of these lines. And then we let the quartics degenerate to a bunch of lines. So the configuration consisted of uh, two lines and then a set of four lines which, uh, sorry, a set of, uh, yeah, four lines like this and like that, intersecting on the given lines and similar another one like this. So uh, I'm sorry, I cannot draw on the screen, but uh, basically it looks like, the, well, I know I cannot draw it on the screen. 
So anyway, the question is, you, you need this, you need, you need a singularities of a certain type at the intersection of your hyperplanes. Okay. So in, in the, for the 18 planes, actually, I do not remember for the 18 planes, but for the, the, the lines in P2, I remember very well, but I, I, uh, I can't can say. I... Yeah, okay, I take a square and then I draw uh, a line through the top, to, top uh, to the, to AB and through CD and through a, 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 uh, AC and BD. And then I do that again. And then I've and the, well anyway okay okay it's something like this uh, I, I I'm sorry I cannot answer better than this, but these are always geometric conditions right that's not oh, yes, like you're, you're conditions. saying some class should vanish in cohomology it's it's just no, no. it's just tangency, it's tangency which ensures that the classes vanish in co that, that that okay the other I mean the other answer is the other answer is how you prove that the class you see starting with the class in P two or. Uh, and, and the bar group of C of P2 or in H3 of C of P2 questions and mod two. And you want it to, to be, become unrofied upstairs. And so it's the tangency properties which you have at the bottom, which ensure that the, well, basically it's, it's, a, it's a form of Abiyanka's lemma. You have tangency properties which ensure that when you take your, your the ramification of your cohomology class is inside the ramification of your chronic bundle or your chronic bundle. And when you pull it back, uh, it, it kills the ramification, and so the class becomes unrofied. And uh, the way that it, it, you ensure this is this tangency property. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I cannot say better line right now. But this, I mean, this is the thing which ensures uh, which we had. This is this, this thing that ensures this point two. You see, these tangency properties ensure this point two. That at, for any discrete variation, at least one of FGI has trivial residue at, at W. Okay, so let me go on. Uh, so here's an outcome. So, this example, as I said, we produce this example, which has the property that the image of a cup product is unrefined and the image doesn't vanish, and the image doesn't vanish using our essence theorem. Yeah. Uh, and so we give this, we get this example of a variety which is not severely rational and which cannot be detected by the Artin Mumford invariant. In fact, later, there was another outcome of this example, and this, this falls into the category cratic forms and beyond. Uh, Clavoisin in 2006. Um, had um, proved that an integral version of the Hodge conjecture holds for commission two cycles and complex rationally connected varieties of dimension three. And she had asked whether this still holds if you look at rationally connected varieties of a higher dimension. And then a, a joint paper with her uh, using algebraic case theory, we actually related her question to the vanishing of the third and rough cohomology with torsion coefficients. And then we could apply the example we had in, uh, in the paper with Zoyan Guren to get a negative answer to a question for rationally connected varieties of dimension of this six. So in that range, the Hodge conjecture for dimension two cycles uh, doesn't, uh, for, for rationally connected varieties, doesn't hold. And then later progress by Schreider, I'll, I'll come back to that later, uh, as enable one to get a ne negative answer all in any dimension at least four. So this is one application which is way out of the field of quartic forms and which is quite spectacular for people in complex geometry. Okay, now let me come to uh, uh, the method of Collar in 1985. So this was somehow a first instance, not quite, but a first instance of specialization method. And the starting point of Collar was uh, a theorem of Matsuzaka, which is the following. Suppose you discrete, take a discrete variation ring and take the fraction field and K, K is the residue field, little k, and take a flat projective morphism with geometry integral fibers. Assume total space is normal. If the joint fiber of the fa family is ruled, that is rational to a product with P1, then the geometric special fiber is ruled. So rulenness is preserved in, uh, under specialization. And in some sense, this is the best you can do because there's this famous example, 
you take a family of cubic surfaces with a parameter lambda given by x u plus y q plus x u plus lambda t q. So the geometric generic fiber is a, is a smooth cubic, so it's certainly rational. But if you look at a special variable lambda equals zero, what you get, you get something birational to P1 cross an elliptic curve. So it's not rational, but it is ruled. And so uh, Collar, this theorem of Matsuzaka, as you may see, is a discrete version ring. It doesn't say that A is a quick characteristic, okay? That's completely general. And so uh, Collar proved, so if Collar looked at smooth hypersurface of degree D in PN, now, if the integer, if the degree is at most n, such hypotheses are rationally connected. That's a famous theorem of Collar, Miyakamura, and Campana. And uh, Collar produced a mildly singular projective variety in projective in positive characteristic, which after desingularization admit non trivial global differential of a certain type, which implies that this variety is not ruled. So it produced um, uh, nice varieties in positive characteristic, which are not ruled. And then using specialization in unequal characteristic to such varieties, he proved that very general smooth complex hypersurfaces, final hypersurfaces, that is those of degree at most n, with roughly d at least equal to 2n over 3, are not ruled. And particularly, they are not rational. Okay. So the point is that you, need, uh, you cannot do this game if you restrict to, if you reduce the characteristic zero, you have to reduce to positive characteristic. You have to use this purely inseparable cyclic covers of projective space to, to apply this method. But Matsuzaka's theorem works in unequal characteristics, so you can apply it. So this was really quite spectacular because all of a sudden you had, so in the range where you have final hypothesis, you had one third of them for which you could prove that very general ones are not uh, rational. Between two n over three and and and, and. now and then uh, a few years ago, Clavoisin invented a new uh, specialization argument. So here is our theorem: take a smooth connected curve over the complex field, and look at the projective family of complex varieties of relative dimension at least two, and assume the family has smooth fibers away from a point zero in C. Look at the special fiber. Suppose the special fiber the singularities are very mild. They're just all ordinary double points. And also assume that there's a relation of singularity x0 tilde to x0 with the property that the, the, the Martin Manford invariant of this non singular variety is non trivial. Then the conclusion is that the very general fiber of this vibration is not simply rational. Okay. So this is you specialize, but you specialize for something singular. So you couldn't do this in a smooth family because that, that group here is, is, uh, is constant in this family. So you cannot detect it, uh, you know, if it was non-zero on the special fiber, it would be non-zero on the gel fiber. So you, you need these singularities if you want to apply it. But the remarkable insight was that if you had something rather nice, that's mildly singular, you could use this technique to prove that the generic fiber, the general, very general fiber is not so rational. Okay. So you use, you use the blocks reverse decomposition of a diagonal and then full term special for char groups. So this is, refers to a famous paper of block and string reverse back in, the, I think in 80, 86 maybe. Okay, and the corollary was that she proved that a, a double core of P3 ramified along a very general quartic surface in P3 is not stable rational because you can, de you can degenerate such a variety to a double cover ramified along uh, along a, a quartic with 10 singular points, exactly the Artin Mumford example. So you degenerate to the Artin to the Artin Mumford example in its singular version. And then this theorem gives you that the general version, the very general uh, surface and the uh, threefold in the family is not stable rational. Okay, so shortly after, uh, after I mean, this is very inspiring. And so Purika and I, we generalized that method. And so I want to describe a bit what we did. Um, so use of the char group of zero cycle, rather than using uh, block string inverse decomposition of the diagonal, we use the char group of zero cycles of our arbitrary field. 
So let me explain this. So I repeat, this is not a specialist. So I, I have to recall a few things. So, time. so given a variety of a field K, one lets Z zero of X be the free abelian group and closed point of X. These are the points with was really filled is a fine extension with little k. A zero cycle rational equal to zero is by definition a linear combination of zero cycles of the following type. When it's given a proper morphism C to X, where C to K is a normal integral curve, when it's given a rational function on C, one can look at its divisor, which is a zero cycle on C, and one pushes it down to X, F lower star of C of G. And when look at linear combinations of such zero cycles on X, these are the zero cycles which are rationally equal to zero. Note here, I didn't assume that X was proper. You can define this in this general context. If X is proper, then you can look at the map which associates to a close point, uh, uh, zero cycle is degree. Well, you can always look at this for any variety. So K of P is a residue field, which is a fine extension of K. You look at the fine, this fine extension multiplied by the, this integer ni. If x is proper, then the, this degree map induces a degree map on the quotient of c0 of x by uh, this relation. Because on a proper curve, the degree of a zero side of a divided function is zero. So we have this, uh, and the kernel is denoted a0 of x. So this is the charge of a zero cycle. So Pio uh, Kanai will make the following definition. Take a field. Now, a proper morphism of k varieties z to y is called universally c0 trivial. If for any overfield f of, the, of k, the map f low star from c0 zf to c0 yf is an isomorphism. Okay. The point is that we want to allow arbitrary field extension, not only for extension, but any typically we'll have a look at f, a function field of some variety. Okay. We want this map to be an isomorphism. In the special case when y is just a point, the proper k variety is called CS0 trivial. And for such a z, for any overfield f of k, the degree map is an isomorphism. There's a lemma, which is that to prove that this looks like a complicated property, but to prove that uh, uh, proper morphism like this is universally CS0 trivial, in fact, it's enough to look at the fibers of a schematic point of y that is not only of a closed point, but also a generic point of sub varieties. So it's enough to discuss the special fibers. I mean, all the fibers, but just the fibers of, of the points, the schematic points. Okay, here are some examples of C0 trivial varieties. Is one which looks weird. You take n at least one, and you take a homogeneous point mill of any degree. And then you look at the cone f of x1, xn equals zero in p and k. Well, that is C0 trivial. Why? Because in fact, any point you can connect it by a line to the vertex of the cone. Okay, so you can connect all these points. So, but it is very singular, of course, okay? except in trivial cases. You mean an affine space? No, no, I mean, I mean the, uh, in P and K. I mean, P and K, and I look at the cone. Typically, I look at X squared plus Y squared plus I, X to the N plus Y to the N plus Z to the N equals zero in P3, in P3, not in P2. It's a cone. Okay, so it's got this singular point. So okay, I, I, all, okay, I it's all the lines with this, this point. Uh, this is not very interesting, just to say that this is a C0 trivial variety with this definition. Okay. Um, for at least two, another example, which is more interesting, is a smooth quadric as soon as it has a rational point. Because such a smooth quadric is actually is birational to P2. Uh, uh, in fact, a smooth projective zero integral k variety, which is k rational, is C0 trivial. Okay. So, this property of being C0 trivial is the partial invariant of smooth projective varieties. More generally, it applies to so called retract rational variety. I, I don't want to discuss this notion here, but it's uh, for people who know. Okay, here is one example which is curious. You take the Fermat cubic hypersurface of the complex field. Now, if n is odd, it's well known that these cubic hypersurfaces are rational. This is the generalization of the famous argument for cubic uh, surfaces in P3. But for n odd, it's, it's, an, it's unknown whether they're rational or even whether they're stable or rational, okay? Or if n equals four. But one can show that they are uh, C0 trivial. 
Now, this notion of C0 trivial, uh, uh, C0 being zero trivial, one should be careful because there are surfaces, smooth projective surfaces of dual type, that is, which for which some multiple of the mechanical bundle nearly gives an embedding to projective space, which are C0 trivial. And such surfaces are very far from being rational. Yeah. Okay, so let me explain the specialized method in the simplest case. Um, so here's the proposition which, uh, with Pirutka. You take a Hanselian discrete version ring, you take its field of fraction and its residue field. Uh, let X over A be a proper, faithfully flat, okay, over A, with uh, Jupiter integral fibers and smooth geric fiber. Assume this special fiber admits the dissingularization Z to Y, which is uh, universally C0, which is, which is such that F low star is an isomorphism. Okay, I just assume this over the ground field. Suppose X is stably irrational. Then the conclusion is the degree map on Z to Z is injective. Okay. So we're assuming something of the Drake fiber that it is irrational. And we, we assume that the distribution map induces an isomorphism C0, and we conclude that the degree map on C0 of the smooth variety Z is injective. And I, in fact, in most cases, we conclude it's an isomorphism. Okay, so how does one do this? Well, the proof is using moving lemma, Hansel, and Fulton specialization homomorphism. So I'm going to explain this proof because that's the simplest proof, and it's quite, uh, well, I think it's, it's okay. So, you pick up, so you have Y, you take a non-empty smooth open set in Y in such a way that the, the inverse image in, in Z gives an isomorphism. Okay. Z to, you, to Y was a desingularization. Then you use moving lemma. Any zero cycle of degree zero on Z is rationally equivalent to zero cycle of degree zero supported on V. V is open in Z. You can move your zero cycle of the smooth variety Z to, to, uh, to something irrational common inside V. Okay. Now, because it's, it's at V, but it's also inside U then. Now, A is Encelian, and U over K is smooth. So you can lift this to zero cycle of degree zero on X over K. But now X over K is still being irrational. Therefore, we know that ZC is rational to zero, actually equal to zero on X, on XK. An X on cap and X. Now, for the proper map X over A, there's a specialized homomorphism from C0 of X to C0 of Y. Here, Y is the singular variety, okay? Not, not, okay? So, what we conclude is that the zero cycle ZB, which we get back, is rational to zero on Y. But then this ZB was the image of this ZA, okay? And so, so the image of ZA under F low star is zero. But we assume that this map was zero. So we conclude that ZA is rational equal to zero, okay? So we lift, but then we, we lift, then we apply the special homomorphism at the singular level. But because the point comes, the, the zero cycle comes something on the non-singular part and the, the map of F lower star on C0 is an isomorphism, then we conclude that the ZA is rational equal to zero. So, so, okay, so now uh, this is the baby case of the specialist argument. And now let me give the gel one, the, the one which is of interest for geometry. You take a discrete version ring, case field of fraction, and you assume the real fields are regularly closed. You take X over A, proper, faithfully flat, with, with geometry integral fiber and smooth geric fiber. You assume that the generic the special fiber admits a disingularization such that the map now is universally C0 trivial. Let K bar be an algebraic closure of K, X bar, the, the ge geometric generic fiber. And now we have the following implication. The geometric generic fiber is stable rational. The geometric special fiber is refract rational. The geometric, uh, uh, ge geometric generic fiber is universally, is universally C0 trivial. And then the smooth K variety Z is universally J0 trivial. And this last property implies that for any I and for any N, for any overfield L of K, the map 
from HILZ mod N to HI and unrefined FZ is an isomorphism. And in particular, if you look at the bra group, you get isomorphism. And in particular, if you stay at the level of, of K, with little k are breaking close, you get the bra of Z is zero. Okay. So you start with the fact that the geometric generic fiber is stable and rational, and you conclude that the bra group of the desingularization of the special fiber is zero. This is assuming that this synchronization has the property that the map is universally C0 trivial. Okay, this sounds more complicated than the previous argument, but in fact, it's basically the same. The, the idea of the proof is the, is the following. You replace the DVR by its synchronization. You do find an extension of K. And then the trick is to replace the residual field K by the big field extension given by the function field of Y to replace it by the local ring of the joint fiber, fiber of Y on X tilde and to replace K by K of X. So it's basically the same idea, except that you go over to some big field. And the consequences on the unified cohomology are classical. And in fact, they, they contain a paper of Merkoyev. Uh, if you take uh, something which is smooth projective with a K point, if the joint point is rational going to uh, to a rational point, then if you take any Ross cycle module, then the unified cohomology attached to it is, is constant. So, and the application we had was to smooth quartic hypersurface in P4. So what we did is we started with a quartic hypersurface in P4, biracial to the Alton Mumford threefold. And then we did something stupid. We took the, the, the double cover and we homogenized it in, this, in the obvious way. And the W squared T square minus S4 X, Y, Z equals zero. And so, and then you get something, but this something is singular. It's got nine ordinary singular points, and it has a line of singular points. And then we did the work of desingularizing this, uh, this Y and checking the morphism F Z to Y is universal, this is your trivial morphism. That is, you have to look at what happens above the, the singular points. And on the other hand, we know that that bar of Z is not zero by Artin Mumford. And so the theorem above give a very general smooth quartic hypersurface in P4 is not stable rational. It's not even retract rational. The non-rational of this, such uh, varieties is a famous result of Viskovsky and Manning, but they, their method didn't prove that the variety was not um, retract rational. Okay, and note the difference. That is, uh, Viskovsky and Manning proved that an arbitrary smooth quartic hypersurface isn't rational. Whereas this method only proves that a very general smooth quartic hypersurface is not stable rational. Okay, and uh, there are two versions of, of such results. One is for varieties of a discrete version ring, as we had above, and the, the more ge geometric version where pe people speak about very general numbers, but basically two methods are equivalent, the two, two statements are equivalent. The one advantage of the discrete version method is that it enables one to handle unequal characteristic. Okay. So for instance, using this such specialization, one can prove that there exists smooth quartic of a C, which are defined over a number field and which are not stable rational. Okay, so uh, after that, Totaro uh, uh, got a vast extension of, uh, of, of these results using the same technique. So it, it proved that if you take uh, an integer D roughly in the range of uh, Collar, but slightly better, a very general hypersurface in PN plus one of degree D is not universally C0 trivial. So this is slightly better than Collar for non-rationality. I think it got uh, quartics in P5, which were unknown. Okay, but Collar disproves unusualness. Now the method used by Totaro is to use specialization and equal characteristics. So the technique which I just described and it disproved C0 triviality of this singularization of the special fiber using Collar's technique. That is using differentials for the desingularization. It uses specialization to reduce characteristic two. And so just very shortly, if the degree is, is even, it generates to a slightly singular variety, just like Collar. Okay, and then he uses uh, this uh, non-vanishing of uh, of uh, differential in a certain range. In fact, a weaker 
uh, statement than what uh, Collar proves. And for odd degree D, there's a, a nice, uh, he, he cannot do it directly, it's, but there's a nice trick that is, he uses a double specialization. He, he lets the, the hypersurface of degree 2a plus 1, they generate two uh, hyperplane and a hypersurface of degree 2a. And then one can use a variant, a variant of this uh, with reducible special fiber of the argument we had with Pirutka. And then you, then you can combine what you had for D equals 2A with this variant, and then you get the result for degree 2A plus one. Okay, after that, there was a series of papers disproving stable rationality of very general varieties in classical family of rationally connected varieties. Connect bundles were PN of certain types. Uh, cyclic covers over PN of certain types. Uh, you have to specify, specify the, what you're talking about. So you fix the degree of the cover, uh, and the degree of the N, the degree of the cover, and degree of immersion locus. Yeah. Similarly here for the conic bundles, you have to fix which type of conic bundle you look at. Similarly for complete instructions, also for familiar hypersurface in PR across PS of various by degrees. Uh, the, the, the work we have was on, what we did use the, the bra group. Most of the papers which I mentioned uh, that followed, in particular those by Okada, use reduction to positive characteristics and differential and positive characteristics like co what Kolar had done and what Totaro did. This seemed to give access to the largest classes of fundal varieties. Uh, as we shall see in the second talk, if we use higher unified composition filter forms of any rank, uh, Schrader managed to handle many more classes of fundal hypersurfaces than, than the range uh, D, D bigger than two end of the three. So uh, a few words about a few things that were done later. Uh, you can discuss, uh, okay, this method proves that some varieties are not rational, but it, it, it can also help to discuss if the varieties are unirational, what is the smallest degree of unirationality you can get? Okay, so if your variety is covered by some protective space, what is the smallest degree? So if you take cubic abscess, for instance, they're covered by some degree two, but, um, in general, when can, when, if you take a projective rationally connected variety, one can show that there's an integer n which kills the char group of zero cycles and in a universal fashion. Okay. Collar gave a few results giving low bound for n using his technique, and Chassis Tamadu and Levin uh, give systematic low bounds for final hypersurfaces roughly in the same range. Okay. They use resolution to characteristic p and differentials. Right. So I'm I'm in time. So next week, uh, we'll go back to the bra group and higher unified comology. Uh, I'll discuss work of Hasset, Perutka, and Chinka, where they produce uh, an answer to a famous question. They produce smooth proper families of complex varieties with some fibers rational, but very general fibers which are not rational or not even slightly rational. And then I'll discuss the work of uh, some work of Schreider where he uses twisted forms and rated form to extend the abstract statement by Collar and Totaro. The abstract statement is that the general hypersurface of degree D at least two end of the three is not stable rational. To prove to get the vast improvement, a very general hypersurface of degree D at least log two n is not stable rational. So it's a big, a big jump. Okay. And that uses uh, fist of forms and forms related to that in an essential way. Yeah. Uh, one comment about this is that, uh, as Collar points out in various places, it is an open question whether there exists at all one smooth hypersurface of degree at least four in projective space in an arbitrary number of variable which is not rational. I mean, presumably there are, there, there, there are some, but uh, presumably, I'm sorry, presumably, well, he's asking whether, yeah, he's asking whether there's a single one which is rational. Is there a single uh, smooth hypersurface of degree at least four in PN for big N, which is rational? That's an open question. But anyway, this D bigger than log two N is still something quite spectacular. So I end up, I end with references for this talk. There's the Artin Muffet paper, which uses the bra group. 
You have the papers by Sultman and, and Bogomolov, which uh, use the identified bra group. Uh, the paper of uh, Wieselingerin, which I mentioned, the paper by Kolar, paper by Voisin, paper by Spiritka, paper by, by Totaro, Chester Tamatu and Levin. And also uh, there, is some, there are some, some surveys in this book, Rational Geometry of Hypersurfaces. There's surveys by, by Voisin, by, by myself, and also there's a very nice survey by, by a very actually complete proof by Kolar of the rigidity uh, theorem in a different uh, line of investigation. And here to finish in the last minute, some propaganda, right? So you can read some about uh, this topic in one chapter of this book, which has just come out. Thank you for listening. And I hope I'll see you next week. Thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. So, okay, so you know, in this uh, variety rationale seminar in Paris, so, uh, at some point, uh, clapping was not our way. So, but uh, right, anyway, yeah. uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so we, okay, so maybe, maybe uh, questions or comments before next week. You can use the chat, of course. No, okay. Well, I will, I will ask a question. So, what, what about air equivalence? <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, the thing is, you can use uh, in, the, in the specialization argument. You see, if a variety is retract rational. It is all trivial. So in the in the special argument, if you are unhappy with uh, using full time specialization argument, you can use specialization for R equivalence, and you'll get the result same result in the end. Is that an answer to your question? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. So it, it fits. Uh, it fits in uh, yes on the boundary of, of the uh, other questions. Okay, so so you are wondering to 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 think about questions. It will be possible to to ask uh, maybe at the beginning. I don't know a question of, on this talk. Uh, Jean, Jean Louis, do you put the notes uh, somewhere on your on your page or something? I can like I can do it. I can do it. I'll post them. Yeah, okay, so that would be nice to. to... I I put them on the front page yeah, so they they can reach. Okay, it. They can reach easily. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, so that that's a way to to get questions. Okay. So if people can read uh, anyway i mean uh, I, as i said this is a survey talk so it could be that everybody in this audience knew this story by heart <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe okay so see you next week then okay bye thank you bye, bye. see you <laughs>